So, hi. Um, it's been a month yet again. So, hello if you've missed me. Hello if you haven't missed me. To be honest, don't really care. This is all for me anyway. I'm the only one who watches it. Um, been very busy over the past couple, past month or so, mainly due to uh, let's be honest, having an absolutely awesome social life. I can't, I can't argue with that. It's very true. Um, thanks to Sue's. Sue, uh, there we go. I love you. Um, with whom I've been to the theatre a couple of times, and to the guys at work and everyone for keeping me very entertained. Let's be honest. In the last four weeks, right? Let's start with immersive theatre, immersive cinema. Um, as you may remember, in one of the previous broadcasts, I went to uh, Future Cinema, saw Who Framed Roger Rabbit, awesome. Um, and since then, I've been to Secret Cinema, which is similar to Who Framed Roger Rabbit in that there's things going on around you, but you don't know what the film is that you're going to see. Um, personally, it was good, it was okay, I really enjoyed it, but I hated the movie started watching it for sort of the first 10 minutes I'd never heard of it about it some cult classic um, which meant it did really badly at the box office but it did very quite, quite well on DVD sales and so didn't bother with it luckily it was all set in the 1920s so in the place where we were doing six cinema there was a speakeasy so went and sat in there a few glasses of whiskey smoky atmosphere jazz bands knock out um, the other, the thir third one was Punk Rock, which is an immersive theatre project. I'm not even going to try and describe it really, it's very difficult. Um, as an audience member, you're looking at potentially two different plays. You're in a building, the building is on different levels, there's different sets, there's scenery, there's actors who you can follow as they go through the various parts of the play, or you can just wander around, which is what I did a lot. Um, so you turn a corner and suddenly you're in um, a forest on the third floor of a building in up near Paddington. Really weird, but amazing. Absolutely amazing show, I would recommend that. Of the three then, um, Secret Cinema, I have to be honest, I probably wouldn't bother to go and do that again. £60 for a film that I didn't actually watch. Seems an expensive night out. Um, it was enjoyable, I have to say, but it just really, yeah, not that great. Uh, Future Cinema was amazing, I really loved that. And Pump Trunk, absolutely amazing so that's my choice for this one looking at other things I've been to see um, it's really weird when you live in London you have a tendency to keep going oh I must go and see blah blah I must go and do blah blah and you just don't get around to do it and that's true of the last of the two plays or two musicals that I've seen recently Jersey Boys and Billy Elliot um, Jersey Boys have been going for a few years Billy Elliot's been going for nine at this point and it's sort of like, why did you put it off? Why did you not do it before? They are both absolutely amazing plays. Um, Jersey Boys, for those who don't know, is the story of Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Um, follows their life from when they first met, pretty much through to present day. So, some fantastic music, and thank you very much to my mother and father, who played this stuff when I was a kid, so I knew every song, pretty much off by heart. Um, some amazing little bits of facts. Uh, the song, oh, dear me, can't take my ears too good to be true, can't take my eyes off of you, you feel like heaven's such I want to hold you so much. That one nearly, very, very nearly didn't get released. And it's like an iconic classic song now. So, it goes to prove that sometimes the Simon Cowles of this world don't necessarily know what they're talking about. Billy Elliot, uh, which I saw on Saturday with my brother who was down for the weekend. Hi, Tommy, if you're watching this. Um, just astounding uh, for a 12 year old boy to be on stage virtually the entire show and do every manner of dancing and singing and acting and everything just absolutely amazing um, full credit to everyone involved a superb show incidentally for most of these shows if you go on to www.timeout.co.uk or timeout.com and go for London you'll find I've put reviews on these because basically I like to spread myself around a bit as a lot of people know um, what else two other plays uh, I've seen recently both of which I've been very lucky are fantastic 1984 which is based on the George Orwell book of the same name very unusual very believable, very graphic, and if you're sitting three rows from the front and the rats are about to get out of the box, 
in room 101 that you really want to run and believe me I was on the way um, and a very small play in a little theatre just down the road near Waterloo Station called Positive which is the first time I've ever managed to see anything that has made HIV positive people the whole status, the stigma around it, everything hilariously funny I honestly I loved so much, everyone did superbly written um, really re-emphasises the points that despite what the media, the Daily Mail got the, earth, uh, the Express, all these papers will say HIV and AIDS are not just gay diseases they can affect everybody no matter who male, female, straight, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, whoever they can affect everyone brilliantly get the point across but with humour and with an amazing amount of wit so I really recommend that except it finishes this week if it does at all definitely go and see it um, and that's it on the place front uh, oh no there was one more called All My Sons which was at the Regent's Park, Park Open Air Theatre interesting play an Arthur Miller one one I'd never heard of never heard of or seen and still pretty good um, the theatre itself is just unbelievable if you haven't been there uh, I actually went on to Google Satellite View and had a look and it is as beautiful as it looks so there we go right I'm trying to do this in under 10 minutes again and it's amazing how difficult that is especially as I do have a tendency to waffle so I'm sure you've guessed um, so we've got three and a half minutes let's talk about the elections uh, this is going to be published today which is the 27th of May so we've had local council and um, and European elections here and according to all the papers there's been a complete earthquake in the political side of things UKIP are poised to take power the Queen will be moving out of Buckingham Palace and Farage and his grinning band of merry men will be moving back in and moving in there absolute rot UKIP all they have done is they've been used as a protest vote by people who can be bothered voting um, yes they've got more councillors but they still don't have a single council that they are running yes they've got more MEPs but nobody actually really cares about the European Parliament itself have they got an MP? no have they got 25% of the votes as was has been claimed on the BBC which is virtually their broadcasting company now no they haven't they've got 25% on a 37% turnout they're around about 7 to 9 percent this is not a serious political party despite what anyone tells you they are if they were I would be scared because they're amazingly homophobic they're bigoted they're racist they're misogynistic they're just about putting the world back to the 1950s they're not I'm not worried because I think come the real election 2015 they will be seen off in a blaze of purple and yellow or whatever colours they have and Farage will not be heard of again rather like a couple of years ago when the BNP were getting council seats and had a couple of MEPs they were going to be the big thing Nick Griffin was on question time where are they now? they're not one thing I will say though about this is the BBC is meant to be politically unbiased BBC is so biased towards UKIP, I cannot believe how much airtime they give these people. Okay, you've got the three main parties, well let's be honest, two main parties because the Lib Dems are basically on their way out at the moment, but you've got the main parties. Those are the people who hold power in this country, not UKIP. And yet Farage turns up with his beaming smile on the Andrew Marshall particularly, so often it's unbelievable political journalists and people outside of the Westminster bubble get a grip UKIP are not real that's basically all I'm going to have to say on this this matter except those of you who didn't vote on Thursday shame on you particularly if you are female because people died to get you the vote come May 2015 I hope you're going to do the right thing get your asses into gear apologies for language get into, a, into the polling station and stick an X in a box. It's not difficult. The 60 odd percent of people who say 
oh I don't bother voting because it won't make a difference 60% is a majority it will make a difference and I sincerely hope that you all vote next year we're down to six seconds so not that much more to tell you except one final thing went to see a student production of Equus there we go time's up went to see a student production of Equus last Thursday congratulations to everybody involved because it was bloody brilliant all right okay that's it I'm done so I shall um, have a quick look at this, upload it, and hopefully see you again in about a month's time. Bye for now.